Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I have my most favorite video of all of the year to share with you. <laughs> Middle grade March is here. It is March 1st and today I am here to share with you videos of a ton of other booktubers telling you about a middle grade book that they would recommend for you to read. It is full of favorites, full of diversity, full of such fun picks. I think these guys did a fabulous job this year letting you know of some really great books, many of which I'm adding to my own TBR because I haven't even heard of some of them. I love that. We're going to start off with the 2021 Newbery winner, and then we're going to go into the different prompts. And then at the end, there's a bunch of wild card picks. I hope that you find some new people to follow. I hope you find some middle grade books that you want to read. And I hope that you have a lot of fun watching this video. So sit back, pause, give yourself a cup of tea if you need to, grab a snack, and settle in because it's going to be good. Enjoy! Hey y'all, my name is Ashley and I have a channel over on Bookish Realm and the one middle book that I absolutely love and would recommend is one that I recently read and it is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. This is one that I just recently read because it was the 2021 Newbery Award winner and I love this one because it had a different form of storytelling than what I am used to. It focuses specifically on a character by the name of Lily and Lily and her sister and her mom move in with her grandmother. So after Lily and her family move in with Harmony, they find out that she is sick and then Lily ends up meeting this tiger and this tiger basically says that in order to help Harmony get better she has to return what was stolen from her which the tiger is saying that Harmony stole something from her. It focuses a lot on Korean folk tales as well as the concept of storytelling and how storytelling keeps us together, how it binds us together, how it helps us pass on traditions to future generations. And it is a very, very important aspect of the novel. It focuses a lot on identity. And Tay Keller wrote this as she was coming to terms with her own Korean identity. So I think that was very, very important. It's heartbreaking. Usually for me, I know that Newbery Award winners usually make me tear up some way, somehow, and I should have known that going into it, but it is a tearjerker of a book because it does deal specifically with grief and it deals with getting to really know family members past the surface level and working through issues with family members. It's also about friendship and finding new friends and maintaining friends and knowing that just because your voice is not the loudest in the room doesn't mean that you don't deserve to be heard. And there's other ways to make your impact on a community other than using the loudest voice. So it definitely is hands down one of my favorites of 2021 and it is one that I highly highly recommend. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Keisha from A Book Like You and I am so excited to recommend to you one of my favorite middle grade novels, Night Books by J.A. White. This would also be a great one to read for middle grade March because it fits one of the prompts to read a book with a silhouette on the cover. So we have our main character, Alex, and we also have a cat named Lenore. This story would also be very fitting for the retelling prompt because while it's not a retelling, it is a bit of a reimagining as it draws on aspects from Arabian Nights and Hansel and Gretel. This is a dark fairy tale. It's pretty creepy, but it's also a really great story of friendship. And it follows our main character, Alex, as he is captured by the witch, Natasha. And in order to survive each night, Alex must read a story from his night books and if he doesn't have a story he has to write another one. These are all original stories and that is the way that he has to survive um, living in this capture. So this draws a lot off of storytelling and writing and I think would be a great inspiration for both young and old writers alike. Alex also meets Yasmin who has been captured by the witch Natasha as well and Yasmin tells him there is no escape. The only way out is through is by using the bone keys which Natasha keeps on her neck at all times. But Alex doesn't want to give up and he is constantly trying to find a way to escape. 
like I said, this is a great dark, creepy fairy tale story. And if you like anything like this, I think you would also like this one. If you do get a chance to pick it up, I hope you love it as much as I did. Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and my channel name is Always Booked. And today I am here to tell you about a middle grade book that I love. So Krista sent a message and said, hey, can you tell me about your favorite middle grade book in under a minute? Um, no, Krista, I cannot. This is the hardest thing. And so I'm, I was really like stressed out trying to pick my one favorite. So I'm gonna tell you this one is really, really really good I don't know if it's my all-time favorite but it is very good and the book I am going to talk about is Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein and so this one is uh, just the most fun adventure book ever. So this one is about a group of kids who get like a ticket into Mr. Limoncello's library. So he is a game designer and he is building the new library. And so these 12 kids, I think it is, get the chance to go into the library before it is open to anybody and they get to stay the night. Well, they stay the night and the doors lock and they're stuck there overnight and they have to solve all these riddles and things and go in all the rooms of the library and figure stuff out. And it is so good you guys this is like it gives me charlie and the chocolate factory vibes uh night at the museum um even some like breakfast club and this is just so good and so fun and this is now i think a five or six book series and i have still only read this first one but it was the best time ever i would highly suggest you pick up M mr limoncello's library if you haven't read it hey there my name is brie from the channel call me after coffee and i am so excited to be participating in middle grade march again this year i only have a few seconds to do this so i'm Gonna hop right in. The book that I chose for this year is actually Sweep by Jonathan Oxier. I read this book last year and I was so excited about it. I loved every page. I loved Nan Sparrow. I love the friendship aspect. I love the found family aspect. I cried during this book. I loved it so much. It broke my heart a little bit and put it all back together. It was such a beautiful story and I like I loved it as an adult. It wasn't just good for a middle grade. I loved it. So Nan Sparrow is a little girl who lost her chimney sweep about five years before and she ends up having to work for this really really nasty guy. Anyway, she ends up getting stuck in a chimney and she just thinks that it's all over for her and something magical happens and we meet our other character who is in the story. We meet her monster and he is just such a funny quirky little character and I love, I love the whole dynamic of the whole book. It's sort of like a magical realism historical fiction and it's just like it's just so heartwarming and so sweet and I loved every minute of it. It pulled all my emotions. I couldn't put it down. Just a beautiful story of love and friendship and just 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 feels good in your heart uh, it is based off of Jewish folklore which I thought was really interesting to kind of read about anyway that's all I've got for this little clip and I hope that you guys all have such a fun middle grade March thanks again Krista and I'll talk to you guys later bye hi everyone this is Naomi from Naomi's bookshelf I want to recommend to you booked by Kwame Alexander it was such a fun fast spoken word middle grade book. I listened to it on audio and it was so much fun. It is about Nick who is a big soccer fan and he loves playing soccer and he has to do a lot of reading for his father and he hates books but he is a crush on a girl who happens to like books. There's also this rapping librarian who is so much fun and it is such a great book about words and the power of them. It's also very empowering about knowledge and love of learning. I thought it was great and I really recommend Booked by Kwame Alexander. Hello everyone, my name is Mary. I make booktube videos on the channel Happily Ever Esh and today I would like to recommend a middle grade to you that would fit the strong family dynamics prompt as well as having a silhouette on the cover so you get a little two for one here. And this is by a very beloved middle grade author, um, Jacqueline Woodson, and it's Before the Ever After, which is her newest middle grade release. I love this book because of the strong family dynamics, the strong friend dynamics, um, the relationship between the son and the dad is absolutely absolutely beautiful and at the crux of the story we're following our main character ZJ whose dad is a professional football player and is starting to suffer um, from sustained head trauma and concussions he has experienced in his job as a professional um, athlete. This book is very quiet in a lot of ways. CJ explains it best that I'm gonna read a little snippet of this book for you. Why I like realistic fiction, real problems that real people could have, and the story's not always ending with some happily ever after, but still, most people seem to end up okay. If you like a quiet but beautiful character-driven story that will be a quick read, I highly suggest adding this one to your middle grade March TBR. I hope you guys read some great books this month. 
everyone, it's Angie from Literary Labors. When Krista asked if I wanted to be a part of her middle grade March collaboration, my first thought was, absolutely I do. My second thought was, and I know exactly which book I want to share, and that is Dead City by James Ponty. This is book one in the Dead City series. So this is about 13 year old Molly Bigelow, who is a student at the Metropolitan Institute of Science and Technology. While there, she joins a secret organization known as Omega. And the purpose of the Omega is to help police the zombie population in New York City. So if you like books that are well-written, books that are full of suspense, action, and zombies, and you also like family elements and a lot of history, then you're really going to enjoy Dead City. Hi everybody, my name is Victoria. My channel is A Musical Bookworm, and I am here today to recommend to you one of my favorite middle grade books, and that is going to be The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. The Little White Horse follows 13-year-old Maria Merriweather, and she is recently orphaned and then goes to live with her uncle at the Moonacre Manor. And what I love about this book is the gorgeous writing, the descriptions of Moonacre Manor are beautiful. I also love the characters and the family element. There's a bit of a um, found family element in this book and there's also a theme of um, ancestry. Everything about Moonacre Manor seems great on the surface, but as Maria spends some more time there and she gets to know the land and she gets to know her uncle, she uncovers a dark secret that the Moonacre Manor is hiding and it has to do with a moon princess and a little white horse. This book is so beautiful. It is chock full of gorgeous prose. While it's a fantasy book, I think you could use it for the family element prompt for middle grade March this year because family is a very strong theme in this book. I hope you pick this up sometime. Happy reading. Have a great middle grade March. Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books and I'm here with a recommendation for Strong Family Element with The Mighty Miss Malone by Christopher Paul Curtis. I think that the hallmark of his works is this warm, loving family, the relationships between the parents and the children, he is really strong with that. This is just a delightful example. This is a companion novel to Bud Not Buddy, which many of you may be familiar with. Set during the Great Depression, we have Deza Malone, who is just a delightful child, A plus student, and her brother Jimmy, who is a songbird in the family. Um, what they have to go through with poverty, some things that happen with dad, how the mom holds the family together, and what they do to carry through. I think you will love it. It's just charming. Excellent. Hey there, I'm Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and I want to recommend you a middle grade book that fits the prompt of strong family relationships and for that I'm recommending The Space We're In by Katja Balin and illustrated by Laura Carrill and this one is a middle grade novel that follows Frank who is 10 years old and he has a younger brother called Max who is 5 and Max is autistic and he struggles with sensory overload pretty often and their mother is a stay at home mum who takes the time to look after Max but sometimes Frank wishes mum had the time to do paintings and things that she did before she had Max and it's really about this family trying to navigate their new life as parents of an autistic child but also Frank who's trying to realise that maybe he might not be a child who has certain needs like his brother but he still needs his parents love and time and this book goes on such a brilliant journey but the friendship relationships in this one and the family relationships are really what made this book shine for me. Hi everybody my name is Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly. I really love middle grade books because they often deal with family and friendship and tackle some really hard issues that we deal with in life, but they also do it with a bit of hope or optimism. One book that I want to recommend that talks about all of these issues is King and the Dragonflies by Kaysen Callender. This is a contemporary book about a boy named King and recently his teenage brother passed away very unexpectedly and so King is dealing with this grief by believing that his brother has been reincarnated as a dragonfly and he would like to share it with his friend Sandy but a few days before his brother passed away 
Sandy came out to King as being gay. King's brother overheard and told King that he's no longer allowed to be friends with Sandy. So this book touches on a lot of issues. It talks about racism and sexual identity. There's a lot of discussions about toxic masculinity and family abuse. There's so much packed into this one book. And I think it's done with such beautiful language and a wonderful storyline. And it's really touching and moving. And if you want to pick it up this year for middle grade March, it would definitely fit into the category that is about family. Hi, my name is Anne. My channel is Elizabeth Ann Reads. And for middle grade March, I would like to recommend the Grandma's Attic series by Arletta Richardson. The first book is called In Grandma's Attic. This is very much nostalgia for me. I read these books so many times growing up. I even re actually read them with my grandmother when I was a kid. And it's just a very fun series. We follow Mabel and Sarah Jane in the late 19th century in Michigan. Um, they're best friends and these are just their adventures growing up. Short little stories about different events that happened. Um, the series kind of grows with the reader. So later on in the series, we have the girls going off to school, getting their teaching licenses being school teachers and eventually getting married and having families of their own. Um, so it's a fun series that grows with the reader. These would work well for the family prompt or um, if you are a child of the 70s, the first few books were published in the 70s. So it would work for that as well. I hope you have a fantastic middle grade March. Well, hello everyone. My name is April from Getting Hoko With It. I'm here to recommend a middle grade book for you guys. And I've got a sequel for you. This is The War I Finally Won. The first book in this duology is The War That Saved My Life. I absolutely love it. It's a World War II historical fiction children's book. And this series is following Ada and her brother who live in London with their very nasty mother. And when the bombs start to drop on London, they end up moving to the countryside and living with a wonderful woman who takes them in and cares for them. Uh, the first book was absolutely wonderful. This book was a little more, uh, more, a little more deep, a little darker, and I really enjoyed this so, so much. Uh, it has a lot to do with anxiety in kids. Ada deals with a lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty in this book. And in this book, a Jewish girl comes to stay with them. And it is so wonderful. I really, really enjoy both of the books. Um, this one just felt a little more serious, but love them both. Can't recommend them enough. I hope you enjoy Middle Grade March. <laughs> Hey guys, Sarah here from Recovering Book Quarter, and my recommendation for middle grade March is The Candy Makers by Wendy Mass. This would fulfill the prompt of an adventure, or also there's like a found family kind of in here as well. This follows four aspiring candy makers who enter a local candy making competition. There is a mystery involved, four different POVs, I fell in love with these characters so very, very much. Very reminiscent of Willy Wonka. If you love Willy Wonka, I truly, truly believe that you will love the candy makers as well. This is the first in a duology and it's just a beautiful story about friendship and candy. Hey everyone, it's Jess from Books with Jess and I'm here to recommend Amari and the Night Brothers. This is such a wonderful middle grade. It's so magical, whimsical, fun and really heartwarming. We follow our main character, Amari, who is a young black girl who goes to a school full of privileged white kids who severely bully her. And her brother has just gone missing. And one day she finds out she has magical powers and there is a whole magical world out there. And she joins a secret society full of agents who look after this magical world. And she goes there and learns how to deal with her powers, uh, but she also goes there to find her brother. So we join Amari on her new quest to find her brother, and as she's finding out who she is and dealing with her new powers, and also dealing with a lot of racism, bullying, so it's really good. Um, there's a lot of references to racism and bullying, and it it's really important, and it opens your eyes up to those prejudices. 
Um, but it's a really heartwarming and really fun story. It's a super quick read. You just won't want to put it down. It's so addictive and brilliant. It's so, sort of like a, a mesh between Nevermore and Men in Black. It's just brilliant. Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa and I'm at the channel Split Reads if you want to check me out. The book that I'm going to recommend to you today is Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. This was my favorite middle grade book that I read in 2020 and I want you to read it because it was a really fun experience. I love the audiobook especially. The things that I love about this book are the character work. I love seeing the main character and his grandmother for all of their complexities. And I also really enjoyed the journey that took a little bit of historical civil rights history and showed how that affects their lives today in a road trip they are road tripping through the south and I also found that really fun to see like all of the places that they ended up definitely a book that I recommend that you check out if you haven't I hope that you enjoy it as much as I did hi guys I'm Chantel and my youtube channel is Chantel at an intentional life the longest name ever um, I'm so excited that Krista asked me to share one of my favorite middle grade books um, so I thought I would cheat and do a series and that series is the wing feather saga um, this series I find impossible to properly explain. Um, we follow three siblings, Janner, Tink, and Lily, who live in a world that is being taken over by these evil creatures. And these creatures are looking for what they what are called the jewels of Anira. And throughout the books, there's four of them, they're wonderful, our main characters are trying to escape the fangs and it's a series of travel and adventure and trust and family and bravery and I just can never explain it properly, but I would love it if you would give it a try. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Bowman. My channel is Amy Bowman, and I would like to recommend Running Out of Time by Margaret Peterson Haddix for Middle Grade March. This follows a young girl named Jessie who thinks she's growing up in 1840 Clifton, Indiana. However, her classmates and friends start coming down with diphtheria, and her mother finally reveals to her that they're actually living in 1996 in a living historical society called Clifton. It becomes Jessie's responsibility to venture outside the walls of Clifton in order to try to find help for her friends and her classmates and schoolmates, and somebody does not want her to succeed. This book is so suspenseful. It's so intriguing. And adding to the suspense of the book is the fact that it's told in third person, limited point of view. So the only thing we, the readers know is what Jesse knows and what is happening. This book can go towards the journey and traveling prompt, but it can also go into um, the decade you were born. If you were born in the nineties, happy reading. Hi everyone, Danny here from Spinelli Speaks and I am super excited to be giving you my middle grade March book recommendation. Now the author I've chosen for this is no stranger to any of us, but the book I've chosen is near and dear to me. It's one of my all-time favorite books and that is The BFG by Roald Dahl. Now the first time I read this book it was actually read to me in a classroom I would say third or fourth grade and I remember adoring its character Sophie, a young orphan who gets picked up by the BFG or the big friendly giant. Now, they get into a few crazy adventures, they even meet the queen, and well, they become very good friends. I remember enjoying all of the crazy words and the farting. <laughs> Who loves a good fart? Danny does. <laughs> Anywho, this is a great book to choose for your prompts for adventure, and if you are born in the 80s, this is published in 1982, so it works for that prompt as well. Well, I hope you enjoy Middle Grade March, and thank you so much to Krista. I am so happy to be part of your recommendations list. Till next time, happy reading. Bye! Hello there, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. I have a middle grade book recommendation for you. Thank you so much, Krista, for including me in this. I have a book that could potentially cover all five of the Middle Grade March prompts. You'd have to be kind of young, though. That book is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. This series fell in love with it. This particular cover covers the silhouette challenge. It also is very family oriented. It's about two siblings who go visit their grandparents. The grandparents live in a park where it seems like kind of strangely magical and you kind of go on an adventure through the park discovering all the magic. So that's the adventure one. It's also got lots of fairy tale creatures involved in it and it was published in 2006. So if you're born in the 2000s you could totally use this for all five of the prompts. But even if you are not born in the 2000s you could still use it for four of the prompts. Please read it. 
is wonderful. I love all of the characters. The boy Seth Sorensen is the younger brother to Kendra and he has such a great growth arc throughout the series. And all of the creatures are so fun. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. I love the entire series. Hello, my name is Oshina and my channel is Oshina Gotta Read Em All. I am recommending Shadow Spinner by Susan Fletcher. This is a book set in the Middle East and it is a Thousand and One Nights retelling. It follows a little girl named Marjan who is really good at telling stories. And one day the Sultan's wife, Shahrazad, hears her telling one of the stories and she asks her to come live in the harem with her because Shahrazad is running out of stories to tell the Sultan to keep him happy. And so Marjan has to continue this long story to Shahrazad so that she can share it to the Sultan. I just love that it shows the power of a story and how it can impact our lives, how it can impact our identity, and also how it can teach you a lesson without you realizing it. That stories can have hidden lessons and wisdom in them that you can glean from them without realizing it. And that's what I love. I love the power of words and the power of story in this book, and I would certainly recommend it. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. My channel is Sarah's Nightstand and I have a middle grade reader in my house. My daughter is in the seventh grade and I asked her if she would recommend her favorite book to you and her pick is Foxheart by Claire Legrand and I have actually read this book myself and I loved it as well. So this follows a young girl named Quicksilver and she lives in this land where witches are real and there is a wolf king who is plotting and planning to take down all of the witches and be the most powerful being. Quicksilver has a companion named Fox who is an actual fox and they are setting up their lives basically to be the best thieves in the land. And she ends up running into a witch and realizes that magic is real and magic can do amazing things, including possibly find her parents who she has never met because she is an orphan. And she ends up teaming up with this witch. They are going on this quest to try to find this wolf king and make sure that the magic in the land is not wiped out. And it was thrilling. It was a big adventure. Claire Legrand, I think, is a great writer. And if you have not read any of her books yet, I would highly recommend picking up Foxheart for Middle Grade March. Hi, friends. My name is Rainy. My channel is Rainy Day Reads. And today I would like to recommend an entire series to you. And that series is the Betsy Tacey Deep Valley series by Maud Hart Lovelace. This book follows the characters of Betsy, Tacey, and Tib as they grow up from the ages of five to their mid 20s, I would say. And I just love historical fiction for middle grade readers, and this is just a wonderful glimpse into uh, the Edwardian era all the way through, I believe, the beginning of World War I. And it follows some hard topics for the girls in every book, but it is told from just a very uh, childlike and innocent perspective for the most part. And I just really love just the charm and the sweetness and the, the family dynamic of this series. So definitely, I think that you should pick up at least one of the Betsy Tacey books for Middle Grade March. You will not regret it. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm from the channel Seeking Stories. And the middle grades book I would like to talk about today is from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basely Frankweiler, written in the late 1960s. And this book tells about the story of two young children who run away from home in order to, quote, teach their parents a lesson, but they don't run away to the woods. Oh no, they run away to luxury. They run away to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, where they go on a wide variety of adventures, including trying to solve the mystery of if a certain work of art is a long lost statue of Michelangelo or not. And on the way, they just really learn what it means to be a true family, a true brother and sister. And that's why I love this novel so much. I read it as a child and I reread it again recently as an adult. And that sense of adventure just really shows how adventure can translate to strength in relationships, no matter how old you are. So that's my uh, biggest takeaway from the book. And I really hope that you choose to read this book. If not this middle grade Mars, at least some point in the future, I really think you'll be enriched by it. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I am from The Bookish Knitter. Today I'm here to share with you my favorite middle grade book, and it's actually a series. 
The Babysitter's Club by Anna M. Martin. This is the series that got me reading as a child. This is the first, these are the first books that I ever fell in love with. This is a wonderful, wonderful series about family, about friendship, about entrepreneurship. It's about four best friends, Christy, Claudia, Marianne, and Stacy, and how they run a babysitting club. It was an absolute delight. They are re-releasing these books now for a new generation. They are all available on ebook as well as new cover reprints. And they've even brought out graphic novels. So if you have young ones at home that are looking to maybe get into this, there's lots of options. I highly recommend these. They have stood the test of time and I think that they are absolutely delightful. Hey guys. Howdy. My name's Christine. And I'm Mo. And this is the Roomies Digest. In today's video, we are going to be giving you our middle grade recs. Yes. So first up, I've got the Weston game. Um, it's pretty much knives out for kids. So a group of people go to this house to figure out why this millionaire died and figure out if they can get their inheritance or not. So yeah. yeah. Why did you love that as a kid? It really just turned me on to uh, mysteries in general, like riddles. You know, after that, I'm pretty sure I read, you know, RMS Fowl and things of that sort. So I just like the the thinking part of it, the who done it, the who done it. Yes. And my rec for you guys is going to be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is pretty much the first chapter book that I ever read, and it's about a boy who discovers that he is a wizard and uh things go from there though jk is a little controversial this is one of my favorite middle grade stories and um yeah it like really got me into reading hardcore so i love fantasy it's like my favorite thing ever yeah so we're really excited to participate in middle grade march and can't wait to see everyone else's picks we'll bye. see you guys later bye Hi, I'm Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Thank you so much to Krista for asking me to join in and give you one of my recommendations. I have a great recommendation for those of you who were born in the 1990s and are looking for a middle grade book published in that decade. This is something I loved when I was growing up. It is called Running Out of Time by Margaret Peterson Haddix. And this is a really interesting book that's a middle grade thriller. It follows a girl who believes she's growing up in a frontier town in the 1800s but when people in the town start dying of diphtheria, she finds out that the adults have been keeping a secret. They're part of a project and it's really the 1990s and so now she has to hide and escape and try to track down help for the people who are dying of this communicable disease. It's really great. It's very twisty. I remember loving it when I was a kid and if you're looking for a book to fit that prompt, I would recommend checking this one out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, and my recommendation for Middle Grade March is The Only Thing Worse Than Witches by Lauren McGazner. First of all, this is a super fun cover. Um, this follows Rupert, and Rupert is, he's, he got the, kind of the short end of the stick with his teacher this year. She's not great. She smells like bananas and belly button lint, is what, she, what he says. So he's looking for kind of an out and kind of getting away from his teacher. It's not great. So he answers this ad in the newspaper to be a witchling's apprentice. So basically his job is to help witchling number two pass her tests, pass her spell tests in order to become a witch. And she's not great at it. She needs some help for sure. And yet Rupert still needs help from her to protect, kind of protect him, to help him kind of get out of this not so great teacher relationship that he has. So these two form a really unlikely team. They go through some adventures and it's super, super fun. I highly recommend this book. Hi friends, my name is Karen and I share my channel Run Rare Treats with my daughter who is almost as avid a reader as I am. She doesn't appreciate the storylines yet, but she loves books. And so I want to foster that love of books, that love of reading. I'm from Jamaica and I'd also like to teach her my heritage through books. And so I was really excited to read this book last year. I'm not a huge middle grade connoisseur, but I love when a book speaks to me. And this book did, When Life Gives You Mangoes by Kareen Get. The author is also from Jamaica and I love how she introduced Jamaican culture. When Life Gives You Mangoes is about a 12 year old girl who the year before the story suffered a traumatic event and she doesn't remember all the details of what happened. And so the story is about how the people in her life have given her the space and time to reconcile the emotions that she is carrying and how she's opening up her life to new experiences. So how she's reconciling her 
her past and her present and her future. I love this book and I highly recommend that you also check it out. It's a really great way to experience Jamaican culture and if you are not familiar with the culture of the Caribbean, this is a really great place to start. Hi everyone, Kate Howe here and a very happy middle grade March to you. And I wanted to recommend to you Rabbit Hill, written and illustrated by Robert Lawson. This is a very charming read about a group of animals who all have to band together when the family that was previously living in the house pictured on the cover and grew the most amazing, um, just rich, uh, fertile garden has moved out of the house. And why they're particularly concerned about this is that this family was very generous with their, uh, their garden harvest, letting a lot of the animals from the neighborhood eat from the garden. But a new family is going to be moving in and they have no idea what this new family is going to be like. So what I love is that they have lots of uh, council meetings about how they'll divide up the food and about what their next course of action will be if the family does not give so generously out of their garden. And um, just these illustrations are really pretty. And then I love on the end papers, they, there is a map of the neighborhood that they live in. So I hope you would maybe try Rabbit Hill by Robert Lawson. Hey, my name is Nicole and I'm from the Girly Girl Bookworm. Chris asked me to share one of my favorite middle grade books. And one of my favorite middle grade books is Once Upon an Eid, which are stories of hope and joy by 15 Muslim voices. And it was edited by SK Ali and Aisha Saeed and it was released last year. It's such a great, fun little book because it includes various short stories all centering around the holiday of Eid. Um, each different story centers on different types of lessons and life lessons that we all can learn from. Um, and I think that it would be a really perfect read to read during middle grade March. I'm Berna from Turkey. And I have a channel named uh, Berna's Bookish Adventures. For middle grade March, I want to recommend my favorite childhood book, Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter. In this book, uh, Pollyanna uh, moves in with her aunt after her father dies and she becomes an orphan. Uh, at first, uh, her aunt is cold and uh, strict towards her, but uh, with her uh, kind heart and warm attitude uh, towards everybody, Pollyanna gradually wins the heart of everybody in the town and finally her aunts as well. I think this book is uh, the book that I reread the most in my childhood. The reason that I love this book so much is that uh, Pollyanna plays a game of being glad, which is to find the best in every uh, bad situation. This approach seems a bit naive, but because of this book, I also have a similar approach to life. It actually helped me to cope with the uh, bad events that happened in my life. Uh, more easily. It's a proof that we can learn a lot and uh, still take away many, many good lessons from reading a middle grade. Hello, hello everybody, my name is Roxanne and this is my channel, The Novel Sanctuary, and I want to recommend to everybody Ghost Squad by Claribel Ortega. And this is Claribel's debut middle grade, and, and this is about two young kids who accidentally awaken bad spirits around the time of Halloween in their town of St. Augustine and they have to use uh, their grandmother and a super cute adorable cat and their wits to try and save their town and their family. It is so wonderfully written. It is so atmospheric. It's great for fall and Halloween time but I, I would probably read this any time of the year. It has so much culture imbued into the story. It is just full of lovely characters, lovely dialogue. It is. It really just comes to life. It is one of the best covers ever. There is just nothing that I don't love about this novel. I recommend it very, very highly. Hi, my name is Olivia and I also go by Livy over at my channel I Livy Simone and the book I have is The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown and this is a quick and spooky book about two friends who stumbled upon an abandoned grave and this turns out to be part of a larger abandoned segregated cemetery and so it was a cool uh, kind you got kind of some history about segregated cemeteries in the south but also they summoned a ghost from that first grave that they found who keeps finding our main character Iris and 
it's kind of an exploration of how both the ghost and Iris um, in various ways feel forgotten. And I just appreciated the story. I also like the little touches of some black girl magic, like when she would mention how her mom does her hair, puts her braids with beads. That's how I used to wear my hair as a kid. And so there is a lot to love about the story, and it's definitely one that I would recommend to you. Hi there, it's Eleanor here from Eleanor Reads Books and the book that I want to recommend is New Kid by Jerry Craft. This is a graphic novel um, which has a beautiful colour palette and what I loved about this book is it really explores the idea of both starting a new school but also looking at diversity. Our main character in this is 7th grade Jordan. He's been sent to a prestigious new school and uh, rather than being sent to an art school that he would have rather gone to because he loves drawing about his own life and creating a graphic novel. He is sent to an academic school by his parents which is out of the district that he lives in and he is one of very few kids of colour within his school. So it's looking at fitting into a new place, fitting in to a school where you um, feel like you're different and also this new school is in an area outside of where he lives and so it's also fitting into a different area. There's lots explored in here. It's a really good book. It's a Newbury Medal winner and I definitely recommend it. There's also a second book out which I can't wait to get my hands on and I think it's a really good book for anybody that um, maybe feels like they don't fit in or sometimes feels like the minority um, in a sea of faces that don't look like theirs. That is it. Ah, so great, right? I hope that you have learned about some new books that you've never heard of before. I hope that you added a bunch to your TBR and I hope you found some new people to follow, like I said at the beginning. Everybody's information will be linked in the description below so you can go check out their channels. And I cannot wait to get this month of middle grade reading underway. I am so excited. Let's chat down in the comments below. Let me know if you found somebody new. Let me know if you learned about a book that you want to read. Let me know what is going to be your first read for middle grade March. I love chatting with you down in the comments. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share with your friends if you want to. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will definitely be talking to you in another video very soon. Happy reading. Bye.